The Eco Carpentry Challenge is an amazing experience for any carpenter going out into the field. So we're taking old stuff and we're making something new. And it's coming out amazing. It's coming out phenomenal. Every day I'm learning new things. I learned how to use a saw, the planer, the router, the router. I've been learning a lot of CAD software and stuff that we can use outside of school for career fields. My favorite part is working hands-on, creating something ourselves. Uh, my favorite part is the creative aspect of it. We don't have many projects where we are able to do whatever we want, so this was a new experience. The Eco Carpentry Challenge is rewarding because we get to donate our stuff to the kids who actually use it. You're giving back to the community by donating whatever you built. The Eco Carpentry Challenge is super fun and I really enjoy doing it. That's part of my day is coming into this class. part of the day. The Eco Carpentry Challenge is challenging, which is right in the name because it's hard to come up with like what to build with the materials you're given. The whole process uh, that we go through is we get all of this uh, old furniture. We just kind of take a look and say, okay, well, what can we build with this? This year, we're building a greenhouse that is going to be used by our gardening club after school. They came up with the idea of making a nursery. Everything that they made was all based off of the book Where the Wild Things Are, using the reused products. So using carpet fiber to do the fur on the creatures or using wall covering to do some of the vines and ivy. We're just making an area for kids to collaborate and we're going to donate to school when we're done. The object is to make a relaxed room so the kids can hang out. We're building these for possibly boys and girls clubs. It's all carnival games. We're making Plinko and we're making skee ball so people can use it, have fun with it, and it gives it another purpose. Our theme is big Vikings helping little Vikings. We're building a puzzle of our school mascot, a kneeling table and easels for kids who are learning how to write. I and mean, it's all gonna be donated to the elementary school next door. But a lot of the team yeah. and Mr. Farrelly went and talked to teachers and the students there and asked like what they need in their classrooms and stuff that we can gear towards the little kids. They were excited to go meet the customer, get all the specifications, and then build a custom job to what they want and tailor it to what they want. I personally like how we're leaving our markets our last year and we're leaving something behind in the school system that'll be here longer than us and the other kids. The Eco Carpentry Challenge is a great learning experience because it helps you work well with others and communicate well. We're trying to teach the students how to collaborate because when they get into the workforce, especially if they enter the construction trade, they're going to have to collaborate with all different types of people. They come from a big variety of backgrounds of life. We have some students that are homeless. We have, they're coming from, you know, Chelsea, Cambridge, Everett, Medford. They're coming from all different kinds of areas here. They put a big commitment into just getting here to this program to do stuff. It's a choice that they've made, that we're happy that they've made, and they're creating their own success. What's really inspiring about this challenge is seeing what the schools produce with the materials that they acquire. It's really great that we've got companies that give this to the Furniture Trust and then the Furniture Trust can bring it out to these schools. Oftentimes, students will get a little deaf to the teachers, always saying the same things over and over and over again. And here we have an outside professional who's, who's living the life that comes in and tells the kids, real world, what it's like to have a work ethic, what it's like to have responsibilities, to have a timeline. Our role is just to push them and just to give them a little bit more than they thought they could do. And then when they take that, they run with it and go 10 times further than I ever thought. I've seen the confidence level of all of them go up in the two months that I've come in here. The Eco Carpentry Challenge has definitely given them a purpose. The Eco Carpentry Challenge is important because it teaches us how to upcycle. I think we've got a generation of kids that tend to just throw things away when they're broken and this has really helped them to think about how, how can you reuse something or turn it into something new. Most people look at trash and it's like, okay, I'm done with it, but we look at it differently. We look at it as if I can build something out of that, I can make that something into something that someone might need. 
you're not wasting and it's put into use and it's, it helps with the environment more too. In the corporate world, we have buildings that are lead. Um, it's all about reuse in the environment. This was old somewhere else, but now we can reuse it and we can build it and help our communities, our environment. All this stuff came from an office and it would just get thrown out if we weren't doing something else with it. Like we'll never look at trash the same. Upcycling is definitely important because there's only limited resources of things in this world and basically taking something that other people consider as trash and we're making something out of it that'll help the ecosystem instead of destroy it. The project that they decided to end up doing is a loft bed. It has a, a bunk up on top and a desk area underneath. The bunk bed the students are building is being donated to a four-year-old Syrian refugee. Their home was destroyed in a bombing in Syria, and then they were living in a Syrian refugee camp and then had come here to the United States, and they're now in the greater Lowell area. My favorite part about this project is the fact that it is going to a family in need. If we don't win, it's not really, it's not about that, it's more we're helping somebody out. I think the students are starting to see a synergy maybe between what the Furniture Trust does and, and what we're trying to do. Natural Resources came to us, the proposition to help us restore the ponds. Furniture Trust is, a, is attempting to, to donate things that can be upcycled uh, in a useful way uh, for the community and we're trying to take materials and upcycle our, our pond to make it useful for people. We are building a boathouse. In addition to the birdhouses and bat houses and trash cans for outdoor use, the information kiosks are huge. We can use this resource to educate the public. Taking trash and turning it into something that could be useful for your community, the world in general. It gives you a good feeling first off and it helps the environment. This project is definitely going to help our campus, helps all of us work with each other and be collaborative. We decided to build a greenhouse. Pretty high tech with the plumbing and everything that we have in there, the lights and all that. Yeah, like there's a whole draining system. Yeah. Like there's tubes in the top and there's three separate pathways that the water goes through. And then it, there's plants coming out of the top and the bottom. And I love to see the kids grow. I love seeing this thing come together. I come in and I smile every morning. Really didn't have the biggest interest in it. When I first did it, I kind of just did it like, hey, it's a class, I don't have to take a science class. But after taking it, I fell in love with construction. I just love everything I do in here, and everybody works together, and it's just an awesome time. One of the things that the students really get a lot out of is knowing that what they're doing, they're giving it back to the school community, our school community. And it's something that even after they leave, their contribution will stay. After graduation, I'm going to join the Air Force and I'm going to work on aircraft and then after that I'm going to become a firefighter. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a pastry chef. I want to be a groomer and an animal trainer. I want to be a carpenter. I want to major in design. I have no idea what I want to do. <laughs> so. The main thing that I want to be is just someone that makes a change. I love the Eco Challenge. There's a world of possibilities and that there's careers available that will take the skills that they've learned through doing this project to the next level and give them a really good living. They're learning how to use cordless screw guns, they're learning how to measure. We came in and we helped them build a SketchUp model, 3D SketchUp model, and they seemed really excited about that and how easily things came from just oh, these are just ideas, to really seeing it in 3D. My job is to train in measuring, marking, calculating, and the procedures for building. But I can't teach someone to get up early enough to get to the job on time. The students are just lacking the soft skills that they need out in the workforce. We need people who can look people in the eye and communicate, people who know what responsibility is, commitment is, people who can be trusted. That's hard to teach, so this project really brings that in. They naturally work together to solve problems and, and come up with ideas. The Eco Kapiti Challenge is amazing. It shows the capabilities that you never knew you had. A lot of students said, I can't do that, and they learned that they could. The way that they carry themselves is tremendous. It opens us up, like I say, it opens us up to the world. I think it's really important that they realize that those doors are open to them, and that, you know, they can run through them. The Eco Carpentry Challenge has helped us see our community in a new way and helped us want to help it. It's awesome. I think yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much.
Yeah! All right! One, two, three, hot! Let's go, Raiders!